Hey, it's Mike over at FishYourAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is how to find bass in a new spot. Now you go to a place, you haven't ever fished it before, you, you're not a bass pro, you're just a weekend warrior, you want to catch some fish and you just want to learn the best ways at your disposal to actually catch those fish. Well, I'm going to tell you how to do that. I mean, some of these things are going to be super obvious to even a guy that's never, ever, ever fished for bass. So I'm going to go ahead and cover a few of them for you right now. All right, first of all, I call it number zero because it doesn't even count. You know, I don't want to hear a bunch of responses like I always hear all the trolls. Like, hey, thanks, Captain Obvious. But obviously you want to find bait. Whatever you're fishing, wherever you're fishing, I don't care if you're offshore fishing for marlin, or if you're in your local pond fishing for bass. If you can figure out where the bait fish are, where the forage prey items for whatever fish you're going after are, you can find the fish that you want to catch. Now, fancy electronics and things like that can see balls of shad or all these different things, but if you don't have that, you know, say you're a kayak fisherman and you're just out there and you don't have the latest uh, gear or anything like that, well, if you can see some bait, great. If you can find some feeding fish, great. If you can, uh, if you see like, wow, that bank over there for some reason, I see two egrets and two blue herons over there. Well, they must know something or they wouldn't be sitting there. So those birds will tell you that there's some sort of bait there. So uh, I'm not even counting that as one because it's just so obvious. But if you see that fish there, so the other ones I want to cover now are the ones that are not so obvious. And again, I'm talking someone, you don't have any electronics, you don't have any of that stuff. If you have electronics, well, you're ahead of the game because you'll be able to tell where all the, the fish, you know, your, your sonar is going to tell you. All this stuff is going to be obvious to you. I'm talking you have no electronics, really never been here before. How are you going to find them? That's what this is about. Okay, water clarity. Well, a lot of water clarity is going to tell you a few things, first of all. You know, what are you going to fish with? Well, if the water is, is relatively clear, uh, not super clear like in a spring, but just relatively clear, uh, you're probably going to do pretty well with some sort of soft plastic. So if it's a, the water is a little bit stained, you know, that's when you want to go with uh, something like a green pumpkin, whatever it is. You know, it could be craw, crawdad thing, lizard, worm, whatever. Creature bait, I, it doesn't matter. Just get it out there, Texas rig, Carolina rig, however you're doing your, your deal, whatever you like to do, and just fish these spots and figure out where they are, where the water depth. And you start noticing things too, like, oh wow, every time I fish this, this, you know, four feet of water, I get a bite. When I go down deep to eight feet of water, well, I'm not getting any more bites anymore. So these are the kind of things you need to think about is water clarity. Good search bait is soft plastics. It might be a swim bait of some sort, you know, some shad paddle tail type thing, you know, might want to use. Now, when the water is a little more dirty, quicker way to cover water and figure out where the fish are is going to be something like a crank bait or a uh, spinner bait. You just cast, figure it out where they are. Cast. Just because you catch one fish, you haven't figured out a, out a pattern either. Just make sure you, you realize that. Catch two fish, eh, you're getting close. But if you catch three fish and you notice, wow, I've got, I caught three fish right now fishing these banks on the south side of this lake, well, now you figured out a pattern, right? For whatever reason, the fish are over there. You keep doing that until you don't catch fish anymore or something changes, right? So you're figuring out patterns. So those are your different search baits. So that is just going to be based on your water clarity figure out what you got to fish with to figure out where the bass are that you want to catch. That's it. Because what you're going to find is a lot of the fish, wherever you go, it doesn't matter salt water or fresh water, most of the fish are in a certain area and they're in a certain area for a certain reason. It's probably because there's food and the right temperature and a few other things too. Definitely look for that when you're fishing in a very unfamiliar spot, I guess is my point. All right, water temperature. Well, water temperature tells you a lot about a cold-blooded thing. You know, a, a fish is just like a alligator or a snake. You know, they can't do much until the their environment around them warms their body enough where they can do something. So if you're fishing really cold water, well, you might have to fish deep where it's maybe a little 
the the water temperatures are more stable. You know, the winter time. I'm in Florida, so winter is a relative term. You know, winter here is very different from winter in New York. So very different, but still the same idea. Water temperature stays very stable down deep. That's why oftentimes when you're fishing in a, in a cold water winter environment, you're going to have to find the fish down deep and you want a slower presentation because a fish is all about calories in and calories out. So if it costs more calories for you to go swim after that fast moving thing, you're going to be like, eh, I'm not going to swim after that fast moving thing. But if a slow moving thing comes by, you're like, ooh, that's not going to waste much energy. I'm going to eat that. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're talking about, you know, cold water scenarios. Now, once you get over to water temperatures, the other way, right? So let's say the water is really hot. This is something we got to deal with all the time here in Florida because it gets so hot here that it's too hot even in the morning. So if you want to fish a sunny bank and it's the it's the middle of July, you don't have usually much time to fish that bank before it's going to get too hot with direct sunlight on it. Then you got to move over to the shady or you got to move down deep or something like that. So if you know that in your mind in your brand new spot, you're like, oh, it's first thing in the morning. I can fish anywhere. But why not fish the parts of the lake that are going to be too hot in a couple hours first just to see if there's stuff there. And then I know I got to move over to the shady stuff under these docks or tree line, whatever it is, you know, look for shade and cooler water. So it's the exact opposite. So temperature is a big deal. It's going to tell you where to fish first or last and what speed to uh, your presentation should be as far as finding out where the bass are. And number three, when, you know, for some reason we've been taught not to fish in the wind for some reason. I don't know why. Because wind is great. I mean, until it muddies up the water way too much or it's super, super strong wind. But for the most part, wind is a good thing until it gets extreme. So say there's been a constant 20 mile an hour wind and it's pushing all and it's, it's blowing right on this, uh, I don't know, the south side of this, this pond. Well, a lot of people would come and try to fish where it's not windy. See, that's the wrong move because where the wind is blowing, what it does, it does a couple of different things. First of all, it breaks up and refracts all the light rays coming in. So the bass, their visual cues aren't as important to them. I guess not as important. Uh, it's not as effective for them to, to discern what, if that's real, if that's something they want to eat or not. So they want to, they're feeling it more, right? So they're reacting on the vibrations that your lure is putting out there or sense if it's scented of some, of some kind as much or well, more so than they would with the visual because they really can't see it as well so that's good it breaks up the light and number two what wind does if it's been a, like a sustained wind for a day or so it'll eventually start pushing all the bait up against that one shoreline so if it's been coming from uh, from the north and pushing everything to the south side of that um, lake pond, whatever it is, after a day or so, you're, you're going to know that it's probably pushed those baits up against that shoreline there. And where there's bait, that's why it's zero, duh, <laughs> you find bait, you find a fish you want. So that's going to help you figure that out. So you want to fish in the windy spots on the windy banks it's not the opposite until it gets extreme where the water's all ruined you know and you know there's really nothing in it there's just muddy gross these are just a few ideas there's a lot of ideas on how to how to fish that but to me the main thing is just cover water till you find fish and figure out a pattern you know if you if you can figure out where the bait is fish there. I mean, that's just what you do. Regardless, you know, in saltwater, I'm a kayak fishing guide and I'm just looking for pelicans and birds. That's the number one first thing I'm looking for. It's like, oh, they're all the way over there. I got to paddle all the way over there. Well, it's better to just paddle over there where you know there's something, there's some sort of forage for the fish you're after versus fishing all the way there. You know, just let nature tell you where things are. So if you find bait, you're there. The other ones don't matter as much, except you got to, you know, the temperature and slowing it up and water clarity teaches you 
which baits to use, but you find bait, you start pitching whatever's in your tackle box at them, eventually you're gonna find something that works. But that's, that's really what I wanted to cover today is for kind of the newbies, you know, you're a weekend warrior, you're just starting these things, how the heck do you find fish? Because I know you watch all these shows on TV and they're like, oh, use this lure, use this lure. Well, who cares what lure you're using if you're fishing where there's no fish? So you gotta find the fish first. So that's what this is. You can find out more of this information right on our website. It's www.fishyourassoff.com and it's salt water, it's bass fishing, it's pretty much inshore, inshore salt water fishing and bass fishing is 99% of what you're gonna find on that website. So if you're interested in any of those things, go there. Uh, I think that's it for today. So until next time, we'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.